Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and welcome to No Budget Reviews, the series where we go around the country finding cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and filming them with absolutely no money at all. So we have to use my phone, no microphones, no fancy DSLRs, nothing like that. Just good honest cars that you can buy for very little money and you can enjoy driving. Well, viewers, I've got another treat for you today on No Budget Reviews. This is a 1989 Nissan Sunny N13 1.6 GSX Saloon. The front end actually has been uh, changed because there was a slight accident with one of the previous owners and I've had to put a new front bumper on it from a lesser model. And also the grill has not been original. But the condition of this car overall is absolutely amazing. There's hardly any rust on it, and the paintwork is really, really good. I'm here with uh, Louis, who's wearing the right to hoodie. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, who owns this car, and he only paid £800 for it, uh, which I, I just can't believe. It's only done 45,000 miles. And it was supplied uh, new by David Ruskin in Reading in November 1989. Now the sunny in this country does not mean the sunny in every part of the world. This car was actually known as the Pulsar in, in a lot of countries and in others, even the Cherry. We'll look at some of the names it was actually given all over the world in a bit. But this is called the N13 chassis. It was made between 1986 and 1991 when the final generation of Sunny then came out was replaced by the Almira in 1996. This is a GSX and so it's a top of the range car. It's got everything apart from for some reason electric mirrors. It's got central locking, power steering, electric windows, got an electric sunroof. It's got a nice sort of, uh, you know, hardware tweed cloth interior. To drive, it reminds me very much of the old Proton 1.3 I used to own. And uh, as you know, we've had a, uh, a Proton 1.5 on the channel quite recently. A lot of the Malaysian viewers get excited about those. Uh, but you just don't see these cars anymore. I'd say about 10 years ago, they were still around. But now, particularly in this sort of condition, you just don't see them. So if we take a look at the front, you can see we've got classic 80s Japanese interior styling. No airbags, of course, because we don't like men. And uh, wipers on the left, indicators on the right, and a, a, a big sort of um, typical Japanese style. This car even smells like a proton. Um, got the radio right down there, because that's what they used to do. Very kind of similar to all the other Japanese makes here in terms of the cotton hold, uh, sort of hot and cold. And uh, just the position here, very simple to use. No air conditioning or anything like that in this car though. You can see there's, a, there's like a blank bit here which would have been for other markets, would have had air conditioning. Has light switch, nice and accessible, not like a Proton where it's buried somewhere at the bottom of the dash. Uh, very, very clear instruments as well. No problem with finding out what's going on. Uh, fog light is this one here. I imagine that was for the front one. Reheated window is just up there. Down here, there is a switch for, uh, or rather a lever for the fuel and the uh, boot release, which is pretty typical of this. Um, we've got a little coin tray there. I think that's a, uh, we've got even more coins in here. Obviously, uh, someone's a bit of an numismatist. Pull that out there for the big ashtray because we're still in the 80s and so you need a big ashtray and then we've got uh, the cigarette lighter there which obviously has been repurposed for modern motoring. Door pockets in here are quite narrow but the doors themselves are pretty narrow to be honest. It's a bit nicer in here than I'd say uh, I don't know Mark um, 3 Escort uh, although the gears would have been pretty nice actually in here. The basic ones certainly not they would have been a bit more steer than this. But a very nice driving position, very, very, very easy to drive car. This has got power steering as well, which makes it even easier. Nice five-speed manual gearbox and a, just a normal conventional handbrake. I've got a boot on it as well, which is nice. And is that another ashtray? Gosh, there's two ashtrays. 
certainly, you know, know where you need to go when you want to smoke. And then we've got nice big glove box. Let's just see if my secret mission documents go in there. Not quite. Never mind. Doesn't matter. And digital clock, that does actually work. Quite a few vents as well. There's sort of two parts of this dashboard. There's this part here and that part there, which uh, is sort of interesting. Right, well, let's take a look at the boot, shall we? So I've already popped the release here. You can also use the key if you like. You can tell it's the GSX. We've got the colour coded bumper, which is the correct bumper for the car on the back. And uh, a nice sort of full width bit with uh, the reversing lights in there. There, there were also three and five door hatchbacks available as well as a coupe and an estate and they were on what's called the B12 platform which was the sunnier sold at other markets uh, but this is an N13. Pretty big boot, um, looks like the seats fold in here as well actually, oh, that could be interesting, we've got a split in there too. I'm not going to lift up all this sort of stuff, we've got some other our hubcaps are on the car. Uh, Louis very wisely put an original set of Nissan hubcaps on this car. It makes it look really nice. We've got some, um, got some, got some, got some mud, flat, got mud flat there. We've got uh, some some Nissan um, uh, floor mats as well, and uh, bits of distributors and some other, other motor on here. So you can fit a lot of stuff in this boot. It's quite impressive, really. Excellent. Typical 80s uh, Japanese engine bay. There's the carburetor, automatic choke in this particular car. I think that's the, the fuse box. Look how simple that is. That's very simple. There's one over the other side as well. Yeah, we've got two fuse boxes for some reason in this car. I don't quite know why. But uh, yeah, you can actually. There, there, there's, the, there's the gearbox just there. You can actually see it. Masses and masses of room. This is a 1.6 litre engine. I forget the, the actual code on this. There's lots of different en Nissan engine C16 codes. C16. Uh, this is producing 95 horsepower. There are also 71 horsepower. I think 122 horsepower 1.6 engines in this car. But this is uh, being the um, uh, GSX. Yes. Being the GSX. This Pulsar is, GSX. Yes, Pulsar GSX. This is the. This is the 95 uh, brake horsepower version. Very easy to work on. It's so, it's just so much room in here. It's, it's very similar to something like an es Escort Mark III or four engine bay in that you look in here and nothing's covered up. Uh, got uh, windscreen washer reservoir here. Is that a canister oil filter just on top of there? Wow. Yeah. Canister oil filter. Got old fashioned dipstick like on a Proton. Yeah, just nice and easy to work on. I think that's probably the fuel filter up there as well. Yeah, I think, I believe it is, yeah. Just battery thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, again, it, remarkable condition, original along here, tiny bit of co corrosion on here, but that is the original slam panel. You can just tell that's the original slam panel in front of there. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the um, original graph. I think this is being a later car, we've got these kind of darker headlamps. Yeah. I think there was a very minor facelift at some stage in its life, but nothing considerable because what it sort of did at the time with the Japanese cars was not even to facelift the car, they just, cha they just changed the whole car. They after about four, four or five years, they just changed the whole car, which is what they, what they did. But yes, remarkable condition. And, uh, you know, f I think for £800, I think Louis done okay. Get in the back. This is my driving position. I'm 5 foot 11. Can I get in? Not the most leg room in here, but that's the same for like a Proton, this era. We've got a couple of Haynes manuals as well. One of them is even sealed, that's brilliant. Um, obviously the obligatory cushion, because this is the Nissan Saloon and therefore you must have a cushion. But you can see actually, again, this is a very, very light and airy car. There's the electric a sunroof button there. That does actually work. We tried that a little bit. Um, earlier, might actually get an insert of that in a little while, but yeah, I mean, I just have to move the seat forward a little bit if I want to want to be in here. It's not sort of so bad, but again, it's very very well trimmed in here. Electric rear windows for the car of this class in 1989 was absolutely extraordinary, and uh, yeah, just big windows. See a lot, and we've got the uh, speakers on the back that Louis planning on putting in at some point. Of course, we've got the rear inertia seat belt, unlike in that Escort I drove the other other week. 
I really like this. It's, it's, I think personally I'd have to go up a size of car if I had people in the back because the Bluebird would have been bigger than this. And I do have a Bluebird that's lined up actually for the channel um, coming at some point next year. But yes, oh, we've even got the uh, Maestro style adjustable seatbelt height there. So uh, Louis is in the back because, well, you all know why, and he's wearing his uh, Datsun hoodie, which is brilliant. I can't get over how easy this car is to drive in comparison with lots of other 80s cars I've had recently on the channel. Uh, Renault 5, Maestro, Mark III Escort, and the Proton. Obviously, I used to own a 1993 Proton 1.3, and this does feel quite similar to that in many ways. A lot of the weight of the controls is very similar. And of course the indicators being on the wrong side, which I've only mis had two mistakes so far about that, but so uh, you know we'll hopefully have no more. So the N13 Sunny, as far as I understand in this country, I mean it's it's difficult sometimes to find proper information about these cars on the internet. There was a 1.3 engine developing anywhere between 70, uh, six, sorry, 60 and 67 horsepower. Then there was a 1.4 that was 79 horsepower. And then there was a 1.6. Now in the estate car, that had a different 1.6 engine that was 71 horsepower. But this is a 95 horsepower engine. And then there was also a 122 horse, uh, horsepower engine, which is I think that this particular engine, um, but with twin cam, 16 valve, and multi-point fuel injection, this is obviously on a carburetor. Right at the top of the range, uh, particularly the 1.8 ZX Coupe, there was a 129 brake horsepower 1.8 engine. Motor 60 this car, well, it was not going to be the best. I mean, we've got 95 horsepower for 1.6 carburetor engine, so. It's not bad in some ways, that's about the same as the old uh, Escort XR3 was when that came out in 1980. So it's not not slow exactly, it's just, you know, compared with the modern car, it, it doesn't feel quite as uh, quite as rapid. But really for everyday driving, this is probably all you need. wouldn't personally go for one of the smaller engines because if this feels moderate, then everything else is going to feel a little bit slow, but the car doesn't really weigh anything. I mean, we've got got any safety aids or anything in here, but of course, you know, no airbag. We don't like men and all that sort of thing. Um, so it probably feels a bit faster off the mark than someone like an Almira would do if you put the same engine into it. The ride, uh, as with a lot of cars of this era, is nice and soft. A little bit noisy in terms of the refinement, we haven't, haven't got modern levels of noise, vibration, and harshness in here at all. But I do have the ability to get up to 50 miles an hour on, on this stretch of dual carriageway just coming into Southampton, so that's what I'm going to do up into fifth. Nice and smooth actually, just very easy to drive. These cars were very popular in their time with driving schools, and personally. Over oh, something like a Mark IV Escort or a Maestro, this has a lot of advantages. Just with the way that everything is so easy to use in the car. Not the most spacious, a Maestro is bigger than this for sure. And these cars are played with rust, like very badly. Uh, that's probably what killed most of them off. But this one is remarkably rust free. And I do like this five-speed manual gearbox. This apparently is the last GSX saloon with a 1.6 engine and a manual gearbox remaining in the country. Certainly in this sort of condition, maybe there's one of the sawn or something, but I do enjoy driving cars like this because they're, they're easy to drive, but they're also very charming. I think a lot of Japanese cars of the 80s are very much like this. Uh, there might be a Bluebird coming up on channel at some point next year, as I've already said, and that 
probably will be a, a delight just like this car is. Before I uh, came down today, uh, Louis said just watch the brakes, they're not particularly good. But having driven a Ford Capri and a Polo G40, the brakes are absolutely fine. They don't actually make you scared. The most scary thing is trying to get the key out because it's got something similar to what a K10 Micro has, where you, if you want to get the key out, you have to definitely make sure you turn all the way to the left and also press a little button at the same time and that is a pain. I don't know why they designed it like that but they just did. Certainly I would prefer in some ways to have fuel injection in the car because unless the engine's nice and warm it does run a bit rough but that's always the way the carburetor cars were back in the day. see why the uh, people who own this car have held onto it for all this long and just looked after it because if I had something like this I'd like to look after it as well. It might only be £800 worth of car but certainly for the nostalgia value of this and for the ability of this to sort of deal with modern traffic I think it's a very commendable thing indeed. Once you get past this uh, cyclist, we'll uh, oh, he's going over there. We will continue. Eine Stunde später. Wow. This is the easiest car I think I've ever driven of this era. It's. Just, just a bit of a delight. I mean, I can imagine using this on a daily basis, which I don't think I could imagine with something like the Escort or the Renault 5 and things like that. This, this is just nice and comfortable. I haven't got a high, I've got a hydraulic clutch in here as well. I've got a nice gearbox. Visibility is very good. Brakes aren't too bad. And it's got this kind of uh, pre-Renault Nissan feel, which is always, you know, good, dependable, solid cars. Which is why people bought them, and they're sort of thousands of thousands all over the world. It's a fantastic car. Well, viewers, let's look at some uh, Nissan Sunny N13 trim levels. We have LS, LX, SLX, SGX, GSX, GS and ZX. ZX was normally the coupe. Of course, the car was known as various other things, and I've got the list of the things here, other names of this car. Uh, Pulsar, Langley, Liberta Villa. Centra and then of course under the button plan in Australia the Holden Astra that button plan worked out really well didn't it really really good idea uh, the Coupes and the estates had a different chassis code that was B12 the coupe was also known as the RZ1 in other markets the uh, Estate that had a different 1.6 engine in it which was a very low powered one. I think it was 71 horsepower um, and then, of course, the car was, was known as the um, Nissan Cherry in Greece. And they built it in Greece as well. They built it in um, New Zealand and Australia as well as Japan and in Greece for some reason. So what do I think of this, of this beautifully preserved um, Nissan Sunny? Well, 
I think this is a car that's probably going to appreciate in value like the, the Bluebirds are doing. Um, the £800 that Louis paid for this, I think, was a very, very good deal indeed. They're actually very, very easy to drive. Uh, the engine doesn't run as quite as smoothly as you expect a fuel-injected unit to actually do. And um, I don't know where you'd find bits of interior trim for this car somewhere. But it's just a, one of these things that's very nostalgic now because these literally used to be everywhere when I was younger and now they're not. So I'm, I'm very grateful for having the opportunity to film one of these and uh, grateful to Louis uh, to uh, um, bring it along um, for filming today. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, please don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. If you wish to submit a car for no budget reviews, uh, you, you can send me an email at japl745 at hotmail.com. Uh, that information is in about 30 seconds after the start of the video. You can see it written down there as well. And I've also got Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Lloyd underscore vehicle underscore consulting. And also Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd vehicle consulting. Thank you.